Today we are constructing the seven wonders of the ancient world, or at least we're going to construct one of them, because you are the builder of one of these beautiful, beautiful buildings or statues as well. You will try to construct your building, you will try to get the most victory points. You will do this by using resources, you will do this by going into battle. And of course I'm going to show you everything in this video. I'm going to show you the setup of this beautiful 2 to 7 player game. But I'm also going to show you how to play it of course. So let's just take a look at this. At the start of the game, each player, either at random or by will, chooses a wonder that they would like to construct, and place it in front of them. These wonders consist of two sides, one that is unfinished and the other one that is finished. You should of course place the wonder with the unfinished side facing up. Each player also get a deck corresponding to the wonder that they are building. This deck should be well shuffled and placed face up between themselves and the player on their left. In the center of the board we got the main deck, the one with a question mark on it. This should also be shuffled real good and placed face down in the center of the table. Out here we got the progress markers. These are again shuffled and put in a pile face down. Then we take the top three and place face up next to the pile. Over here we have the military conflict markers, and down here we have the peace markers. Depending on how many players there are in the game, there should be a different amount of peace markers. And lastly we got the little cat standee. So this game is about you constructing one of the ancient seven wonders. And you will do this by using different resources of course, but you will also be going out to war against the other players. But also by getting these little success tokens here and getting a little extra benefit in your gameplay. In the game you will construct these buildings from the bottom going up. And that just makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, you can't start to build the roof in the center of the air just floating there. I mean, that would be quite an accomplishment if you did that. But just think logically. If you haven't built the ground, well, the house will basically tip over to the side. This game is played out with the players taking turns, starting with the youngest player. Me, in this case. But then again, it's just me here. Then we go around the table in clockwise order, with each player doing their turn to the fullest, then going to the left and so on. When the first player have fully constructed their building, the game will end and we will need to count scores. But what can a player actually do during their turn? Well, let's take a look at that. During your turn, you get to draw one card, either from the deck on your right or the deck on your left, or from the one in the center of the table. The ones on your side, you already know what that card is, because they are faced up. The one in the middle, well, that is a little bit difficult, because they're face down and we do not really know what hides beneath. Unless we have the cat standee. Because if we have this little cute little kitty here, we get to peek at the top card in the question mark deck. And then we get to do our choice on what card we want. But what do the different cards actually mean? If we start by looking at the grey cards, we can see that there are some resources at the top of those cards. These are the resources that you will use to build your wonders. And now, if we look at one of the buildings that we need to construct, we can see that there are different levels to build. And each level needs a different amount of resources. This symbol here means that this level needs two different resources to be able to build this level. This symbol up here means that this level needs two of the same resource to be able to build this level here. And again you need to start from the bottom going up. And as soon as you get two resources that matches what you need to build a level, you need to build that level right away. Once you have built that level, the cards are discarded. And the level that you have built is flipped to the finished side. Now 
you will score this amount of points at the end of the game. As we can see on some of the levels, there are one more symbol. These are the special abilities that your wonder has. And once you have built this level, that ability will activate and you can use it during your next turn. On the box where you got your deck and your building from, you can see what your special ability will do. In this game you also have a joker. This is the gold coin. Because the gold coin will count as any missing resources that you need to construct your building. Meaning that if you have one or two resources but you are missing one more, well then you can use the coin to fill that gap. And again, once you have used your resources, well then they are gone and you need to discard those cards. Which makes sense. Once you have drawn the card that you want to have, you place the card in front of your structure. When you get more cards of the same kind, for example resources, you just place them on top of each other so you can get an easy overview of what cards you have in front of you. And then we have the blue cards. The blue cards will give you scores at the end of the game. Some of the cards will give you a score at the end of the game, but will also give you the cat standee. And this cat is quite powerful, because this will, as I said before, let you peek on the top card of the center deck in the table. And as long as you have this cat in front of you, you get to do that ability, which just gives you a lot more choices, because now all of a sudden you know what is in all of the three decks. But your opponents have no clue. <laughs> the green cards will let you get some progress tokens. As soon as you get two green cards with the same symbol in the center of the green pattern, you need to take either one of the faced up tokens or the top one from the pile. And then the cards are discarded. The same thing happens if you get three science cards with different symbols. Again, you need to discard the cards and then choose one of the available tokens. These green tokens here are not to be taken lightly because there are a lot of benefits in these tokens. These tokens will be placed in front of you in your play area. And now they are active during the entire game. And depending on which token you choose, a bunch of different things are gonna happen. You can get more victory points at the end of the game, you can be able to draw more cards during your turn, some of them will turn your gold coins into two gold coins instead of just one, and so on and so on. I will not go through all the powers because, well, there are quite a few of them. My tip here is that you go through these every time you expose new tokens on the table so all players can get an idea of what they could choose if they want to go for the green tokens. But I suggest that you do because they're quite strong. The progress tokens can only be used once per turn, but you can use them in any order you would like to during your turn. But some of these that gives you scores at the end of the game can only be used at the end of the game scoring. The red cards will have shields on them, but some of them will have one or two horns. The shields will give you protection when you are in battle, and the horns will force you to flip over the peace tokens to the battle side. If there's only one horn on the card, well then you only flip over one token. But if there's two horns, you flip over two. Once you have flipped over all of the peace tokens on the table, we go into battle. When we go into battle, we need to go around the table to see how many shields we have in front of us and compare it to the neighbors on our left and right. If you have more shields than the ones on your side, well you will get one of these victory tokens. These will give you scores at the end of the game. Once you have seen if you have more shields on anyone on your side, the card with the horns will be discarded. But the cards that only have a shield on them will stay on the table in front of you. 
When the war is over, we simply flip the peace tokens back to the peace side. And that's the way the game goes on. One player choosing a card either to the left, to the right or in front of them. And then they play out that card in front of their structure. If they have enough cards or the right cards to either build, get success tokens or go into war, well then we do that. But don't forget to also discard the cards that you have used, meaning either the resources after you have built, the green cards after you have gotten success tokens, or the military cards with trumpets on them. If the draw pile here is emptied, we do not refill it, meaning that when they are emptied, well, they simply stay empty. When one player have managed to complete their structure, the game ends. And now we need to calculate some scores. To start with, we first need to calculate the scores on any finished part of our structure. Meaning that in this case, this player would get 5 plus 3 points. Here there are no scores and these two parts up here are not finished yet. Then we would also need to add any blue cards that we have acquired. We also need to add up any military markers that we have acquired. If you have any success markers that gives you victory points at the end of the game, those are calculated now as well. And don't forget that if you have the little cat standee, well that will also give you two victory points at the end of the game. Once we have calculated all of these different scores, well then we have a winner of this glorious, glorious ancient world. And there you have it, my friend. That is how you play Seven Wonders Architect. Now, this is a nice little game. It's easy to get into. It's easy to learn. There's still a few things for the players to do to get their scores. And you can have a few different strategies. If you're going for just a little extra points here on the success tokens, or if you really want to get into battle, well, it's really up to you. I have played this with friends and families, but I've also played this with just my kids that are six and nine years old and it just worked perfectly. I mean, my six-year-old, she can't read English, but there's no text on these cards, so it's quite easy for them to get into the game, as long as you're just there to support them a little bit. And if you have players that are new to the hobby, or maybe haven't played that many board games before, well, this is an excellent game to bring to the table, because it goes so quick for them to get into the game and learn it. And they will still have a lot of fun constructing their little buildings here, placing out their little cards and getting into the board gaming hobby, or just sitting down for an evening of fast fun, because the game doesn't take that long to play either. It takes about 25, maybe 30 minutes, and if you sit down and simply just go through the little manual here with the players or if you force them to watch this video before they enter your house then you can play in no time there you have it my friend that was seven wonders architects where you construct a building from the ancient world this is a nice game for medium players it's a nice game for casual players this is a great game for just taking out on game night to play with your kids it really works in a lot of situations if you want to know more about this pretty little game here well check out the links down in the description and there will be more information for you if you like this video, well, give it a thumbs up, maybe throw in a comment there, or subscribe to the channel, which makes me so, so happy. But most importantly, my friend, until next time, please do not forget to spread that board gaming love I know you all have. Peace out.